Focus 3, Class Audio, by Sue Kay, Vaughan Jones, Daniel Brayshaw, Bartosz Michałowski, and Linda Edwards. Published by Pearson. Copyright Pearson Education Limited, 2016. CD1. Track 2. Welcome to Home Sweet Home. Today, we're interviewing people who have unusual homes. Jason, can you tell us where you live? I live in a hotel. In fact, I've lived in this hotel since I was born. My parents run the hotel. That's their job. Have you ever lived in a house or an apartment? No, I haven't. But I love living in a hotel. You meet lots of interesting people, and the neighbours change all the time. Sometimes it's hard because I become friends with people who stay for a while and then they leave. It's hard when they've gone. But there are lots of good things about living in a hotel. I can use the swimming pool every day, and I never have to make my bed. It's great. Thanks, Jason. Our next guest is Ellie. Where do you live, Ellie? I'm living on a boat at the moment. Have you ever lived in a house or an apartment? Oh, yes. I live in a house with my parents half the year, and half the year we live on the boat. It's too cold in winter. I've been on the boat for two months now. Do you move around much? Mm, not very much, but it's nice to know that we can move if we want to. Thank you, Ellie. Our third and final guest for today is Michael. Where do you live, Michael? Uh, I live in a school. My father is a head teacher of a boarding school, so we live there. What's it like living in a school? Um, it's OK. I enjoy living near my friends. Have you ever been late for class? <laughs> no, I'm always on time. CD1. Track 3. Did you recognise the national dishes and where they come from? The first one is a simple dish. You cook some lamb, a lot of potatoes and a few onions together. Some people add carrots and other vegetables, but experts say that the real stew doesn't have any other vegetables. This simple but delicious stew is the national dish of Ireland. In the next English-speaking country, roast beef and Yorkshire pudding is a popular dish for Sunday lunchtime, but most people say that fish and chips is the national dish. Unfortunately, it's been so popular that there isn't much cod left in the sea. Of course, this is the national dish of England. Moving on, it's hard to choose one national dish for this huge country because there are so many regional dishes. But few people can resist the most popular dish in this country, a big hamburger with lots of chips and tomato sauce. Yes, you've guessed, we're talking about the USA. Finally, in our last country, there aren't any national dishes, but there are a few favourites. Meat pies, roast lamb and vegetables, barbecued steak and sausages. Where will you find all that meat? In Australia, of course. CD1 Track 4 Hi, Simon. How are you doing? Really well. I've just finished my exams. Oh, great. Look at you. I haven't finished yet. Three more to go. Oh, well. Good luck. Listen, have you ever seen a flash mob? Yes. I saw one on YouTube yesterday. It was fantastic. But I haven't seen a real one. Mm, me neither. But I've watched a few online. Yesterday, I watched a surprise flash mob for a girl's 18th birthday. Oh, right! <laughs> so, I want to organise one for my sister's birthday. Will you help me? You have to learn a dance. Dance? Are, are you sure? Uh, have you asked anybody else yet? Yes. I've already asked lots of people. I spoke to Sally five minutes ago and she said yes. But she's a good dancer and I'm not. <laughs> Don't worry, we have plenty of time. I haven't chosen the music yet. 
CD one. Track five. Teen attitudes to money. We ask brother and sister Tom and Zoe about their attitudes to money and shopping. Zoe. I think I'm very good with money. I don't have much money though because I'm still at school, but I'm more careful than my brother. For example, he spends his birthday money as soon as he gets it. Also, he's older than me and has a weekend job, so he's richer than I am. To be honest, I think he's stupid with his money. The most expensive thing I've ever bought is a leather jacket, and that was second hand, so it wasn't as expensive as a new one. I don't go out much. Tom says I'm not sociable enough, but I just like staying at home. Tom. I'm more generous than Zoe. In fact, I'm probably too generous. If I have money, I spend it. I'm richer than Zoe because I work at the weekend. But she's more careful than me, so she always has money, and I never have any. Actually, I think Zoe's the meanest person I know. My clothes are more expensive than Zoe's, but I buy expensive clothes because people who make cheap clothes have the worst working conditions in the world. I spend a lot of money on going out. Zoe isn't as popular as I am, so she stays at home more. CD one, track six. Hey, I really want to see the new Hunger Games film. It's coming out on Friday evening. Let's go and see it. Okay, but I can't go Friday evening. I'm babysitting. Right. What about Saturday? I'm going to the dentist in the morning, but I'm free after that. I can't go Saturday. I'm going to a wedding. Oh, a wedding? Yes, my cousin's getting married. I'm a bridesmaid. What about Sunday? I'm not doing anything on Sunday. Um, I'm playing football in the afternoon, but I'm free in the evening. It starts at seven thirty. Great, let's do it. CD one. Track seven. Oh, hi, Luke. What time is it? Two o'clock in the afternoon. I'm going to buy the cinema tickets online. Are you sure you're coming? Yeah.、Oh, what time? It starts at seven thirty, but I'm going to get there early. We want good seats, don't we? Yeah. Yeah, we do. I'm going to get a lift with my mum. Do you want us to pick you up? Please. Okay.、Uh, we'll pick you up at six forty-five. Okay. Great. I'll buy the popcorn. CD one. Track eight. Good morning, and welcome to Connected, our weekly technology program. Today we have Susan Redwood in the studio. Susan's a psychologist, and she studies the effect of technology on the brain. Susan, we read a lot of negative stuff about technology. What do you think? Technology is wonderful, but we must use it carefully. If technology rules your life, you won't be a happy, healthy person. For example, if you spend a lot of time playing video games and you don't get any exercise, you won't be healthy. But I don't know many people like that. Most young people I know play video games, but they also play sports. What about people who are addicted to video games? Some people have addictive personalities, and they don't know when to stop. In these cases, their studies will suffer. But it's a very small percentage of people who are addicted to video games. Most people play video games when they've finished their homework, and they continue to get good marks at school. Do you think social networking makes people antisocial? <laughs> I get really annoyed when people say that social networking replaces real friends. It's just not true. In fact, social networking is all about communicating and connecting with other people.、Mm. It helps shy people, and it's a very good thing. But if you use social networking, will you lose your privacy? If you don't use social networking carefully, you'll lose your privacy. 
It's very simple. If you want to keep something secret, don't write about it online. Some people say you shouldn't use technology for a few hours before bedtime. Ah,、oh, that's true. If you use the internet or play video games in bed, you won't sleep very well because your brain will be stimulated. My advice is put technology away a couple of hours before bedtime and read a book in bed. CD one, track nine. Do you fancy doing a questionnaire about technology, Jake? Yeah, why not? Okay, question one: What would you buy if you had five hundred euros to spend on technology? Um, I love listening to music really loud. So if I had five hundred euros to spend, I'd buy new speakers. <laughs> I don't suppose your parents would be very happy about that. If I had five hundred euros. I definitely wouldn't buy speakers. I'd buy a laptop so I didn't have to borrow my mum's. Could you live without your laptop? Uh, yes. If I had to live without one of my devices, I'd probably give up my laptop. I could do everything on my phone. Ah,、oh, it's okay for you. I've only got one device, my phone. So if I had to give up my phone, I wouldn't be able to go online or text or anything. Oh dear. So, what would you do if you were with a friend and she texted someone else the whole time?、Mm, if there were only two of us, I'd be really annoyed. I think it's rude. Really? Well, I wouldn't care if my friend texted someone else the whole time. I'd do the same. Well, please don't do it when you're with me. Anyway, next question. If you had a blog, what would you blog about? If I had a blog, I'd blog about food. What about you? I don't have time to blog, but if I had time, I'd blog about music. Oh yes, you'd be good at that. And the last question: If you could time travel, what time would you travel to? Um, I think I'd go to 1970 if I could. I really like the music of that time. Oh, if I could time travel, I'd go to the future. To the year three <laughs> thousand. The year three thousand. There may not be a world then. CD one. Track ten. The strict teacher. She stands at the front of the class, and you have to listen to her. When she asks a question, you're not allowed to call out the answer. You have to put your hand in the air. You mustn't talk in class, and you have to do your homework on time. No excuses. The relaxed teacher, the opposite of the strict teacher. You are allowed to call out answers, and sometimes you can call him by his first name. You have to do your homework, but you don't need to do it exactly on time. But there are rules. You can't use your phone in class, and when you talk to your classmates. It has to be about the subject of the lesson. CD one, track eleven. What is an entrepreneur? Entrepreneurs are people who can turn dreams into reality. They enjoy being in situations that challenge them. They are the kind of people that take risks and they don't follow the crowd. They want to create things that inspire other people. At school, they often have problems which teach them important life skills. There are many successful entrepreneurs who start life with little money or education. There are plenty of colleges where you can learn business skills, but there is one essential quality that they can't teach you in college: passion. CD one, track twelve. Louis's story. Louis Barnett is a 23-year-old entrepreneur from England who has a passion for chocolate. When he was 11, he was having difficulties at school, so his parents found a tutor who could teach him at home. One day, he made a cake his family and friends enjoyed so much that they asked him to make more. He learnt about different ways of making chocolate, and at the age of 12, he set up a company he called Chocolate. The name is inspired by the problems he has had with spelling.
He's interested in environmental protection, so he never uses ingredients that damage the environment. He also works with a cooperative in the Caribbean, where they run all their machinery with solar power. By the age of 15, Louis had become a qualified chocolatier and one of the youngest entrepreneurs in the world. CD1 Track 13 Angie My friend took this photo. In fact, she took about 50 photos before we got a good one. But I like it and I think I look okay. I'm not smiling because I look better when I don't smile. I wanted to change my profile photo because I've changed my hair. I'm blonde now and I think it suits me. I'm wearing vintage sunglasses, my favourite silver ring and some bangles from India. I'm also wearing a scarf in my hair but you can't see it in this photo. Tim <laughs> I love this photo. It was a great party. That's me in the middle and the others are my classmates. We're wearing formal clothes because it's the end of school party. The girls are wearing designer dresses. They look so glamorous. Even the teachers looked elegant. This is the first time I've worn a suit to a party. When we started dancing, I got really hot. So later, I took my jacket, waistcoat and tie off, and at the end of the party, I couldn't find them. My mum was furious. Becky My dad took this photo of me on my third birthday. I uploaded it because my friends don't believe I had fair hair when I was little. I don't look like that anymore. I was better looking then. But I still have the same smile. I love the woolen hat I'm wearing. It matches my winter coat. I've always been fashionable. I still wear thick tights, but not pink ones. And my mittens aren't attached to my coat now. I think I look really sweet. But my parents say I was a naughty child. Some things don't change. John. This is me in the Sierra Nevada. It's really sunny, so I'm just wearing a sweatshirt and shorts. Of course I've got warm clothes in my backpack, because camping at night can be cold. In the evening, I get changed into trousers and a fleece. The most important thing is the hiking boots. They have to fit perfectly. I love camping in the mountains, but it's too cold to get undressed and put pyjamas on at night. I usually sleep in my clothes. CD1 Track 14 Formal clothes A suit A designer dress A waistcoat A tie Casual clothes Shorts a sweatshirt, a fleece, a white cotton top, a winter coat, shoes and accessories, bangles, vintage sunglasses, a silver ring, a scarf, a bracelet, mittens, a woolen hat, thick tights, hiking boots, a baseball cap. CD1 Track 15 1. Get dressed 2. Get undressed. 3. Get changed. 4. Clothes fit you. 5. Clothes suit you. 6. Clothes match. CD1. Track 16. 1. Good-looking. 
attractive, cute, gorgeous, two, very nice, popular, adorable, charming, three, cool, elegant, sophisticated, stylish, four, childish, immature, five, creative, imaginative, six, brave, adventurous, seven, cheeky, mischievous, CD1, track 17. Hi, I'm Joe Mack, and I work as a fashion editor for Hip Magazine. I think I must have the best job in the world, because today I'm working at the Coachella Music Festival in California. The question I'm asking is, what is the festival look this year? 10,000 people are listening to music here, and I believe the temperature is 32 degrees. I know the killers are on later, and I'm thinking about going to see them, but right now I'm speaking to people about what they're wearing and why. CD1, track 18. Hi, I'm reporting on festival fashion for Hip Magazine. I like your hat. Thanks. I don't usually wear hats, but it's really hot, so I'm wearing this baseball cap. It belongs to my boyfriend. He doesn't need it because he isn't here today. He's revising for his exams. Oh, that's a shame. No, it's okay. My boyfriend hates festivals. He prefers listening to music at home. I really want to see the White Stripes. I listen to their music all the time. CD1, track 19. Hi, I'm reporting on festival fashion for Hip Magazine. Are you enjoying the festival? <laughs> yes, I'm having a really good time. I love your t-shirt. Oh, thanks. It's my festival t-shirt. Oh, it looks great. But why are you wearing jeans? It's so hot. My legs are very skinny, and so I never wear shorts, even in summer. In fact, I don't have any shorts. <laughs> <laughs> so which bands do you want to see today? Uh, I like the Foo Fighters, but I don't know when they're on. I I'm looking for a festival program. I have one here. Oh, they're playing now. Oh, right. Thanks. See you. CD1, track 20. Welcome to That's Life. Our topic for today is friendship, and we're going to talk to two young people and ask them what their friendships mean to them. So, hello, Jenny and Fraser. Hello. Hi. Jenny, let's talk to you first. You're 16. 17. Oh, sorry, 17. Jenny, how many friends do you have? Well, if you mean close friends, about five or six, but I've got 313 online friends. <sighs> Let's talk about the online friends first, shall we? 313. That's a lot of friends. How well do you know them? Some of them I know pretty well, but I look at some of the names and think, who are these people? <laughs> it's so easy to make new online friends, isn't it? They ask to be your friend and you accept. It's not as easy to make real-life friends, is it? That's right. Making friends online takes a few minutes. But a real friend is somebody you get to know over a long period of time. You meet, you spend time together, you get to know one another. It takes a long time to become close friends. Mm, that's right. But some friendships don't last forever. And when you don't want to continue a friendship, you can simply defriend them, can't you? Mm, I'm not sure I agree with that, actually. I find it really hard to defriend online friends. It seems really mean. I suppose that's why I've got over 300 online friends. In real life, if you fall out with a friend, you stop seeing them. 
or sometimes you decide that you no longer have much in common, you no longer like the same things or you've changed, then you lose touch. You don't have to make the decision. It just happens naturally. Yes, I see what you mean. Fraser, what do you think? How do you make the difference between close friends and online friends? Well, all my close friends are also online friends. When we don't see one another, we chat online. But I'd say my closest friends are the ones I socialise with. We have a lot in common. We support the same football team, we listen to the same music, and we go hiking and camping at the weekend. We get on really well together. Do you think there's any difference between friendship between girls and friendship between boys? Um, I don't know really. I don't go shopping with my friends, and we don't paint one another's nails. <laughs> But I think the important things are the same. I know I can rely on my friends in a crisis. A good friend is always there for you. Yes, I suppose that's right. But what about friendship between girls and boys? Are any of your close friends female, Fraser? Ah,、uh, yeah, of course. There are three or four girls as well as boys in the group of friends I hang out with. What about you, Jenny? Yes, I get on well with boys, but I think it's different. Girls understand one another better, and you're never sure if the boys really want to be friends or if they just fancy you. CD one, track twenty one. One. Hi, Rachel. Oh, hello, Janet. Um, I haven't seen you since that party. Yeah, that's right. You were really rude. I know. I'm really sorry. I was just. Listen, I'm not going to forgive you, so forget it. Oh, right. <laughs> okay. Well, I suppose. Goodbye, Janet. Two. Anyway, I was just watching this thing on TV, and the phone rang, and it was him. Yes, it was him. No, what did you say? Well, you know me. Oh no, you didn't. I did. I was so nervous. Oh, you always do that. I've told you, take a deep breath and. I know, but I was so excited. Anyway, three. Right, that's all for today. Don't forget your homework on Monday. Oh, thank goodness it's Friday. <laughs> yeah. What are you up to this weekend?、Mm, not sure. I might play football on Saturday and go for a cycle on Sunday. What about you? Oh, that's too energetic for me. I'll probably go to the library and then see a film.、Oh, well, have a good one and see you on Monday. Okay, John. See you. Four. Hey, Sal. You coming to the party tonight? Um, no, I, I don't think so. What's up? You don't look very happy. Sorry, I just. Well, I um, things aren't very good at the moment. Has something happened? No. Well, yes. Not exactly. Come on. Let's go and get a cooler and have a chat. Oh, thanks. I'd really like that. I'm afraid I'm not very good company at the moment. Listen, it doesn't matter. I'm too tired to go to the party tonight anyway. Let's get a DVD and stay in. CD one, track twenty two. A, five hundred and fifteen. B, two hundred and fourteen. C, three thousand three hundred and thirty. D, nine hundred and one. E, seven thousand eight hundred and eighty. F, four thousand four hundred and sixteen. CD one, track twenty three. One, be there for somebody. Two, get on well. Three, 
fall out. Four. Have a lot in common. Five. Lose touch with somebody. Six. Hang out with somebody. CD1. Track 24. Who do you look like? Are you good looking like your mum? Well built like your dad? Fair haired like your brother or sister? Or really, really tall like your great great grandparent? Do people say you're just like your father? Or just like your mother? Or that you take after your grandparent in every way? Or do people ask where you come from because you look so different from the rest of your family? Your genes are responsible for your appearance and your health. Half your genes are from your mother, the other half from your father. You are not identical to your mother or your father, but you probably look a bit like both of them. Or you may resemble one of your ancestors, for example a great-great-grandparent. But even if you are like other members of your family, you are unique. Your genes are different from everyone else's genes. The only people who have exactly the same genes are identical twins. Some of the features you inherit from your parents are hair, eye colour, skin colour and facial features like the size and shape of your nose. You probably have the same hair colour as one of your parents, but this is not always true. Two dark-haired parents can have a blonde or red-headed child. This happens when there was a blonde or red-headed ancestor. It is common for red-headed children to have freckles, even if the parents don't have them. The strongest or dominant gene in eye colour is brown. If both parents have brown eyes, their children probably have brown eyes too. It's also common for two brown-eyed parents to have a blue-eyed child, but unusual for two blue-eyed parents to have a brown-eyed child. As well as eye colour, you can inherit poor eyesight from your parents. So if you're short-sighted, you're probably not the only person in your family who wears glasses. Tall parents usually have tall children, and short parents usually have short children. But this isn't always true. In fact, children are getting taller thanks to improved diets and healthier lifestyles. 50% of men with bald fathers will lose their hair, but the gene for baldness can come from the mother's family too. Boys should look at their mother's father. They may take after him. There are many different skin colours, from black, dark brown, brown, light brown to white. Most families share the same skin colour, but black parents can give birth to a lighter-skinned child if they have pale-skinned ancestors. Usually, a black and a white parent have dark-skinned children because black is a dominant gene. But twin sisters Haley and Lauren are exceptions. One twin is black and the other is white. Haley looks exactly like her black father and Lauren is the image of her white mother. This was only possible because their father had a white relative in his past. Finally, if you are left-handed or if you have dimples in your cheeks or chin, you can thank your genes. CD1 Track 25 Hair Short-haired Long-haired Fair-haired Dark-haired Red-headed Eyes Brown-eyed Blue-eyed Short-sighted Skin Lighter-skinned Dark-skinned Pale-skinned General appearance Middle-aged Well-dressed Well-built Good-looking other, right-handed, left-handed. C 
CD one. Track twenty six. The photos both show people in clothes shops. In the first photo, a woman is waiting for someone to choose a shirt. I think he's her boyfriend or her husband. She looks bored. In the second photo, I can see a boy. He's waiting for some people. It's hard to say, but perhaps they're his sisters or friends. Both photos show people waiting, and they look very bored. The main difference between the photos is that the woman looks more comfortable than the boy. He has to sit on the floor. CD one, track twenty seven. Welcome to Sport on Saturday. It's quiz time. Let's start with the answers to last week's sports quiz. There were six questions. Okay, number one. We asked you which is the biggest: a football pitch, a golf course, or an athletics track. The answer is, of course, B, a golf course. Number two. Where will you not see a man with a beard? The correct answer is. C in a boxing ring. Why? Because it's difficult to see injuries on the face if the boxer has a beard. Number three. In which sports do you hit a ball with a racket on a court? The correct answer is A. Squash and tennis. For cricket and table tennis, you play with a bat. For golf, you use clubs, and in hockey, you play with a stick. Number four. Which piece of equipment is made of metal, rubber, and sometimes wood? The answer is A. A golf club. A table tennis bat and a hockey stick are made of wood and rubber, no metal. Number five. Where is the highest ski resort in the world? If you're good at geography, you'll know the answer. It's A. Bolivia. Chacaltaya Resort is about five thousand two hundred and ninety meters high. The highest ski resort in Canada is Sunshine Village, at two thousand one hundred and fifty nine meters, and Val Thorens in France is the highest ski resort in Europe, at two thousand three hundred meters. And finally. Number six. What can you find on the roof of the famous Burj Al Arab Hotel in Dubai? The correct answer is B. A tennis court. You can have a game of tennis and admire the view at the same time. Well, that's it. How did you do? Did you get a gold, silver, or bronze? And now it's time for this week's quiz. The topic is CD one, track twenty eight. Places where you do sport. One, basketball court, squash court, tennis court, volleyball court. Two. Boxing ring. Wrestling ring. Three. Cricket pitch. Football pitch. Rugby pitch. Hockey pitch. Four. Cycle track. Motor racing track. Athletics track. Five. 
Golf course. 6. Ice rink. 7. Ski resort. 8. Swimming pool. Equipment. 9. Hockey stick. 10. Golf club. 11. Badminton racket. Squash racket. Tennis racket. 12. Baseball bat. Cricket bat. Table tennis bat. CD1. Track 29. 1. A coach. 2. A referee. 3. A teammate. 4. An athlete. 5. An opponent. 6. A fan. 7. A spectator. CD1. Track 30. I'm not into competitive sport. I'll never break a world record, and I'm sure I'll never win a prize for sport. In fact, I usually come last in races, and if I'm in a team, we always lose the match. I don't understand people who need to come first. I've even seen men cry when the opposing team scores a goal. I like being healthy and keeping fit, but I don't need to beat my opponent. I just need to enjoy the game. CD1 Track 31 1 Win a prize Win a match Win a game Win a point 2 Beat an opponent Beat the champion. 3. Lose a match. Lose a game. Lose a point. 4. Break a world record. 5. Come first. Come second. Come last. 6. Score a goal. Score a point. 7. Keep fit. Keep in shape. CD1. Track 32. Lucky Break. In 1956, goalkeeper Bert Troutman was playing for Manchester City in his first FA Cup final when he dived for the ball in the 75th minute. He knew that he had hurt himself, but he carried on playing. He helped his team to beat Birmingham City 3-1. He then went to hospital, where the doctors couldn't believe he was still alive. He had broken his neck. CD1 Track 33 1. The sports person I look up to most is Federer. He's always been passionate about tennis, but he's also a caring and generous human being. He's given a lot of time and money to charities, especially children's charities. He's a real inspiration. Uh, in fact, he has his own charity in South Africa for poor children. His charity pays for them to go to school and have two meals a day and encourages them to take up sport. 2. Jessica Ennis inspires me. She's a brilliant athlete, but she's also a normal, lovely person who is realistic about life. What I like most about her is that she's an Olympic champion, but she's also very modest. She says there are things she dislikes about herself when she looks in the mirror, and everybody can relate to that. 
I think she's a much better example for young girls than skinny fashion models. She's a healthy role model and a lot of girls follow her example and take up sport as a hobby or professionally. 3. I think Robert Kubica's story is inspiring. He was the first Polish racing driver to win a Formula One Grand Prix. But then he had a terrible accident and he nearly lost his arm. In spite of his serious injuries, he has stayed positive and returned to racing. He inspires young people because he's so courageous and determined. CD1 Track 34 Hi, my name's Jackie Smith. I'm here today to tell you about how I became the international under-18 windsurfing champion at the age of 16. It's something I'm really proud of. I think I've been successful because of two people, really. My mum and my cousin Rachel have been my role models. I first went windsurfing with my mum. We lived near the sea and we spent every summer on the beach. My mum had entered windsurfing competitions when she was a teenager. She didn't win anything, but she really enjoyed it. She started to teach me windsurfing as soon as I could swim. I was only about seven years old. My cousin Rachel was there too. She and her family lived near us. My mum gave us lessons together. Rachel's two years older than me, and I've always looked up to her. I still do. Rachel was good at everything. She was a really good example for me. I wanted to be sporty, like her. I did a lot of different water sports because I grew up near the sea and it was natural. At first, windsurfing wasn't my favourite thing. I liked other water sports, like swimming and sailing. I used to go sailing with Rachel and then we joined a children's sailing club. We spent all our weekends there, even in winter. We did lots of sailing, and then we got into rowing. I wasn't sure about rowing at first, but my mum thought it was a good idea. Now I'm glad I did it, because it made my arms strong, and that helped my windsurfing. Windsurfing became my number one sport thanks to Rachel. She entered a windsurfing competition when she was 15. I always wanted to do the same as her, so I entered the competition too. She came second and I came fifth. But I really enjoyed myself and that was the moment when I decided that windsurfing was my sport. My mum and Rachel are still important role models for me. I think I take after my mum. I hope I have some of the same qualities anyway. And Rachel is like a big sister to me. CD1 Track 35 1 Team 2 Serve 3 Sport 4 Shoe 5 Start CD1 Track 36 1 E Team Ski Speed 2 Uh Serve First World Three Or Sport Court Draw Four Ooh Shoe Grew Lose Five R 
start. Arm. Heart. CD one. Track thirty seven. One. Courage. Courageous. Two. Determination. Determined. Three. Generosity. Generous. Four. Inspiration. Inspiring. Five. Modesty. Modest. Six. Passion. Passionate. CD one. Track thirty eight. She was born this way. A positive attitude and a good sense of humor. Katie Sullivan is an actor, an athlete, a motivational speaker, and a person who refuses to accept the words "no" or "I can't." She was born without the lower half of her legs, and has worn prosthetic legs all her life. She grew up in Alabama, USA, and had an active childhood. She kept up with her siblings at the gym and at the local swimming pool. She feels lucky because her family treated her in just the same way as her other siblings. When Katie was a child, she didn't like to put her prosthetic legs on because she was much faster without them. Other children would ask, "What happened to you?" Katie's favorite thing to say was "shark attack." She enjoyed making up stories because she thought it was boring to say, "I've been like this all my life." A brave career choice. When a person is born without legs, there are plenty of things that are difficult or even impossible to do. But Katie believed she could achieve anything, so she chose two occupations. That are difficult even with both legs. When she was a teenager, she saw a production of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. One of the actors was Katie's classmate at school. Before the play was over, Katie had made her mind up to be an actor. A new pair of legs and new challenges. She did a degree in theater and then moved to Los Angeles, where she has played roles in theater, television, and film. She has a positive outlook on life. She thinks that if you believe you can do something, you should go for it, and you shouldn't let anyone tell you that you can't do it. So when Katie's prosthetist asked her if she'd like to try running, she said yes. She was twenty-five, and she had never run before. But as an actor, she liked to stay in shape. She thought running would be a good way to do that. She was given a pair of running legs, and she set out on a new chapter of her life. Tragedy, then triumph on the track. Katie was the first person in the world with two prosthetic legs to take up running as a competitive sport. In two thousand and seven, she was chosen for the U.S. Paralympic team, but during training, she fell over and missed the chance to compete in the two thousand and eight Beijing Paralympic Games. She was devastated, and gave up running for two years. But then she took it up again and qualified for the final of the one hundred meters in the twenty twelve London Paralympics. She didn't win. But she did beat her personal best time and set a new American record. She said that it was one of the most amazing moments of her life. Katie's family, friends, and fans look up to her as an example of someone who has overcome her disability and fulfilled her ambitions. CD one, track thirty nine. One, keep up with. Two. Make up. Three. Make your mind up. Four. Set out. Five. Grow up. 
Six. Take up. Seven. Give up. Eight. Look up to. CD one. Track forty. Visualization. Before an important event, I advise athletes to visit the stadium. This allows them to visualize the day of the competition. They can imagine the smells and the sounds in the stadium, and they imagine winning the competition. Then, when the day of the competition arrives, they try to recreate the success they imagined. Positive thinking. I encourage athletes to talk to themselves before a big race. I force them to concentrate on the times when they won. They need to stay in the present and tell the negative voice in their head to stop talking. Good athletes want to win, but top athletes expect to win. That's positive thinking. Relaxation. Even top athletes can't help feeling nervous, especially when they find themselves standing next to last year's champion. I let them talk to me about their worries, but on the day of the competition, negative thoughts are not allowed. It's a simple fact that if they manage to control their nerves, they tend to do better. Winning, it's all in the mind. CD one, track forty one. Whoa! Ronaldo's just scored a fantastic goal. He's definitely the best footballer in the world. Hmm, I'm not so sure about that. What do you know about football? I know that some football players get a million euros a month. If you ask me, they earn too much. That's not true. Only a few players earn that much, and they deserve it. No way. Football players don't save lives. Football's just a game. Are you kidding? It's the most popular game in the world. That's true. But they don't do anything important; they just kick a ball. The thing is, football players can only play when they're young, so they have to earn a lot in a short time. I'm not convinced. I just don't think footballers are good role models. I'm sorry, I don't agree with you. They're great role models. They train really hard. CD one, track forty two. One. I think female athletes should earn the same salary as male athletes. I agree. All athletes should be paid equally. I'm not convinced. Men have to work harder. Two. If you ask me, running is the best sport in the world. That's true. You can do it anywhere and any time. That's not true. Playing team sports is much better. Three. In my opinion, golf is for old people. I agree. It's too slow for young people. Are you kidding? I'm twenty and I love playing golf. Four. I think boxing should be banned. It's too dangerous. No way. I think it's great. That's true. It's too violent. CD one. Track forty three. Hi everyone, my name's Lily, and I'm a swimmer. And I'm talking to you today because I want to encourage lots of you to take up swimming. It's a great sport. It isn't expensive to do, and it keeps you really healthy. I started swimming when I was very young. I think I learnt to swim when I was about five. I didn't learn at the local leisure centre. But when I was in Spain on holiday with my parents, then when we came home, my parents paid for lessons for me, and I went once a week. I loved it straight away, and I got better and better. When I started secondary school, I joined a swimming club, and then I started going swimming two times a week. I had a lovely trainer called Vesla, who came from Norway, I think. She was really good. 
We trained very hard. Sometimes we were swimming non-stop for two hours. She encouraged me to enter competitions, and I did quite well. Nearly every Saturday, a group of us from the swimming club went by coach to other towns to have competitions. That was brilliant fun. After I'd won quite a lot of competitions, I moved into the advanced class at the club, and I had a trainer who was once an Olympic winner. He wanted me to go training every day before school for an hour and a half. My parents didn't agree because I needed to be awake for my schoolwork, but they let me go two mornings a week. In the holidays, I can go every day. I love my swimming, and I would really recommend it as a sport to everyone. It isn't important to enter lots of competitions like me, but just do it for fun and to keep fit. CD two, track one. One. Board a ship. Board a plane. Board a ferry. Two. Book a ticket. Book a flight. Book a hotel room. Three. Catch a train. Catch a bus. Catch a plane. Four. Cross Europe. Cross the sea. Cross a river. Five. Miss a train. Miss a bus. Miss a flight. Six. Reach Sydney. Reach your destination. Seven. See the sights. CD two. Track two. Departure. One. Go to the check-in desk. Two. Get your boarding pass. Three. Go through security. Four. Wait in the departure lounge. Five. Go to the gate and board the plane. Six. Put your bag in the overhead locker. Seven. Fasten your seatbelt. Eight. The plane takes off. Arrival. Nine. The plane lands. Ten. Get off the plane. Eleven. Go through passport control. Twelve. Collect your luggage in the baggage reclaim. CD two. Track three. One. Who's got the passports? Um, you have, haven't you? No, you put them in your handbag. Oh, oh yes, here they are. Phew. Thank you. What is the purpose of your visit? Oh, we're visiting our family in a little place near. Okay, thank you. Next. Two. Any bags? Yes, just one. Hmm. Thirty-five kilos. It's five kilos too heavy. Five kilos? Oh no! I didn't know what to pack, so I packed everything. That's twenty euros per kilo. A total of one hundred euros. Oh no! That's all my spending money. Can I take something out? Three. We are pleased to announce that flight number five two zero zero to Abu Dhabi is ready to board at gate sixteen. Please proceed to gate sixteen for flight number five two zero zero to Abu Dhabi. Where's Sharon? I don't know. 
She went to buy some perfume. Go and find her. Tell her we're boarding. Four. There's mine. What colour's yours? Black. Like all the other bags. Oh dear. They all look the same. Time to buy a new suitcase. A pink one. Five. The captain has switched on the seatbelt signs for landing. Please return to your seats and fasten your seatbelts. Michael, wake up. <laughs> We're there. What? That was quick. It was three hours, but you've been asleep the whole time. Six. Take your jacket and shoes off, please. OK, come through. OK, take your belt off, please, and go through again. Do you have anything in your pocket? No, nothing. Take your earrings off, please. All of them? OK, next, please. CD2. Track 4. 1. Deal with. 2. Go away. 3. Move on. 4. Set off. 5. Stay over. 6. Stop over. 7. Turn up. CD2. Track 5. What do you think about the news that there's a lion in the holiday resort? I'm terrified. I heard it. I was just making the tea when I heard a loud roar. It must be a lion. I've never heard anything like that before. It's very frightening, but I'm pleased the police are looking for it. I hope they find it before it finds them. And you, sir? Uh, I, I don't really know what to think. Several people say they saw a lion, so I suppose it might have escaped from the zoo. There's a zoo about 20 miles from here. How about you, madam? Well, it's a bit worrying, isn't it? I've got young children and a dog. It's the dog I worry about. If the lion has escaped from a zoo, it could be very hungry by now. It might not have eaten for a while. And my dog would make a nice snack for a lion. I'm keeping the dog and the kids inside the caravan. And you, madam? It's exciting, isn't it? I think it could have been somebody's pet. There are some strange people around here. I know that some people have snakes and crocodiles as pets. Why not lions? They're cute when they're young. It may have grown too big and they let it go. Sir, what about you? I don't believe it. It can't be a lion. That's ridiculous. I think it's probably a cow. And the roar? Cows make loud noises. CD2. Track 6. And now the news from where you are. Thank you. This is Radio Essex. The search for an escaped lion has now been called off. Police were called to a popular holiday resort two days ago after receiving calls from worried residents. Several people reported seeing or hearing a lion. The local zoo has confirmed that no lion has escaped. The police found no footprints or any other signs that a large wild animal was in the area and so they have concluded that it must have been a large domesticated cat. And now for today's sport and... CD2 Track 7 1 So, how was your family cruise? Oh, it was OK. Pretty good, really. We all got on well most of the time. We didn't have any arguments. Well, not until the last day. And then I had a really big argument with my sister. It was stupid, really. I wanted to get off the ship and visit Naples, 
but my sister was tired and wanted to stay on the ship by the pool. She always does what she wants, and she doesn't think of other people. I had to go to Naples on my own with our parents. It was really boring. 2. I just don't think we should stay here. It's not a very nice campsite. I think we should go and find a youth hostel. A youth hostel? That's so boring. This is supposed to be an adventure. I know, and I really want to have an adventure, but putting a tent up in this weather is horrible. It's raining a bit, but we'll be lovely and warm in the tent. It's going to be more comfortable than a three-star hotel, I promise. Three. Yes, can I help you? Uh, yes, I booked a single room for two nights. My name's Baker. James Baker. Baker. Yes, here you are. Two nights. Would you like breakfast? Oh, yes, please. That will be an extra £16. Oh, I thought it was included. Did you book online? Yes, I did. Oh, right. We have an online special offer at the moment. Your first breakfast is free, so you just need to pay for the second day. Can you fill in this form, please? Four. For today's ski update, we go over to Mark Eden in the French Alps. Thank you. Yes, I'm here in the wonderful French Alps beneath Mont Blanc. I'm in the village of Megève, one of the oldest ski resorts in the world. The weather is perfect today, but last week we had a few warm, rainy days when skiing was not much fun. But it's impossible to be disappointed with Megève. There are so many different things to do here. There are more than 90 restaurants and cafes. Fortunately, the rain has turned to snow. It's time to get out of the cafes and go skiing. 5. It's time to leave ordinary beach holidays behind and take a trip that you will remember for the rest of your life. With Overland Tours, you will see the real world. Overland Tours believe that travelling is not only about the destination. The journey is an important part of the experience. Come with us on one of our Overland buses and travel to places other travel companies don't reach. You will meet local people and learn about their culture. Our tour leaders will take care of you and make sure you have everything you need. Come and join an overland tour. You'll be in a small group, but we can guarantee that you'll have big experiences. Six. You're too young to go backpacking on your own. You've never been abroad before. You have no idea what to expect. You might not like it. You'll probably be lonely, and anything could happen. You could get ill, or somebody could steal your money. I know you want to get away and have new experiences, but I'd feel much happier if you were with friends. You could stay with your Auntie Margaret in Canada, or your pen friend in France. I just don't understand why you want to go trekking in Nepal on your own. CD2 Track 8 The Andes The Canaries Cyprus The Danube Hawaii The Himalayas Naples The Nile The Pyrenees the Thames, Vienna, Warsaw. CD2, track 9. Cities, Warsaw, Vienna, Naples, Islands, Hawaii. Cyprus, the Canaries, rivers, the Nile, the Danube, the Thames, 
mountain ranges, the Himalayas, the Andes, the Pyrenees. CD two, track ten. One. A car journey. A return journey. Two. A school trip. A business trip. Three. A travel company. A travel agent. Four. A tour leader. A tour guide. Five. A beach holiday. A skiing holiday. Six. A ski resort. A seaside resort. CD two. Track eleven. Globe Trotter Travel Competition. Would you like to win a digital camera? Write about a memorable holiday. Your entry must. Be entertaining. Describe an unexpected event. Include lots of creative description. Be two hundred words or fewer. Best stories from last year's competition. A. Under a canoe. I was in the Lake District with my family for our summer holiday. There were four of us: Dad, Mum, my grumpy twelve-year-old sister, and me. On the first day, it was raining, but we decided to hire some canoes. Mum and I set off in our canoe, while Dad had to share with my sister and put up with her bad mood. The lake was calm; it stopped raining, and I felt the warmth of the sun on my shoulders. All around us were dense forest and steep hills. On the other side, a waterfall cascaded down the hillside into the lake. This is all right. I thought. Seconds later, I was less happy. While he was admiring the view, Dad crashed into our canoe and knocked us into the water. It was cold, extremely cold, and wet. Fortunately, we survived the cold and the embarrassment. My sister thought it was so amusing she cheered up. Then she wore a smile for the rest of the holiday. B, a perfect sunset. My girlfriend Betty and I were in Barcelona for a weekend. We had no plans and spoke no Spanish. We looked through a Spanish guidebook in our youth hostel. We eventually decided to go to the top of Tipidabo, a mountain overlooking Barcelona. If we were lucky, we could watch the sunset over the city. We set off by bus from the main square. The bus took us higher and higher above the city. I couldn't wait to gaze at the stunning views over Barcelona. At every stop, passengers got off until we were the only two left. Then the bus driver stopped the bus and got off too. Tibidabo, we asked him. He pointed to a mountain on the other side of the valley. We were on the wrong mountain. We sat on a bench overlooking the sparkling lights of the city far below. We had no idea where we were, but we didn't care because we got our perfect view of a blood red sunset over Barcelona. C. Out in the wild, I love wild animals, so my parents took me on holiday to South Africa for my 18th birthday. I remember the holiday as a series of images: the cold blue ocean, funny penguins. Miles of unspoilt beaches, lively cafes, and friendly people, but the highlight of the holiday was a three-day safari. Safari parks in South Africa are covered in trees and bushes. This makes it difficult to spot animals, but our safari rangers were really good at finding them. We saw elephants, giraffes, zebras. Buffalo bathing in a lake, and a family of lions sleeping peacefully under a tree. Suddenly, we heard a noise close to the jeep. There was a flash of yellow and a loud roar. Nobody moved a muscle. 
The leopard ran back into the bush and left us feeling terrified. Not far away sat two small leopard cubs. At that moment, I learnt something. Humans created the internet and spaceships, but we are helpless in the face of nature. CD two, track twelve. One. Eagle. Two. Wolf. Three. Bear. Four. Rhinoceros. Five. Leopard. Six. Lion. Seven. Ostrich. Eight. Buffalo. CD two. Track thirteen. When my parents got their first car, we were really excited. There weren't so many cars on the road then, and nobody used to worry about pollution or the environment. There was plenty of clean air. We didn't used to have seat belts then either. I remember my baby sister would sit in the front with my mother. My father smoked a pipe while he was driving, and the car used to be full of smoke. We used to go on holiday to France every summer by car. It was a bit boring because we didn't have computers or DVDs. We'd listen to the radio and look out of the window. In France, my father followed a map. We didn't have GPS then. We'd stop to look at the map, but we couldn't ask for directions because we didn't speak French, and nobody used to speak English in those days. CD two, track fourteen. Air travel didn't used to be very common when I was a young man. It was very expensive, so travelling by air was a luxury. I used to work for an American company, and I would travel from London to New York regularly. Then the flight was just four hours by Concorde. It takes eight hours now. On Concorde, the cabin crew would look after you really well. They'd offer you food, drinks, or even cigarettes. Lots of people would smoke. It's funny. People would dress up to go on a plane. They'd put their best clothes on. Men would wear suits, and women would wear their smartest outfits. It used to be a glamorous way to travel. Not like now. It's so stressful. We didn't used to go through security at the airport. I would carry my Swiss Army knife everywhere. That's impossible now. Are planes safer now? Probably. But travelling by air is a very different experience. CD two, track fifteen. Left or right? Today, seventy-five percent of cars drive on the right, but it didn't always used to be like that. In fact, everybody used to travel on the left. In Roman times, roads used to be dangerous. And travellers would carry swords in their right hands. Travellers on horses used to ride on the left side of the road, so that the right hand was free to use the sword. Then Napoleon changed the rule. Why? Because he was a revolutionary. Before the French Revolution, the aristocracy used to travel on the left, and poor people would stay on the right. After the revolution, the aristocracy joined the poor people on the right. And driving on the right became the new law. What about the rest of the world? China, Portugal, Sweden, and parts of Canada used to drive on the left, and only changed the law during the mid twentieth century. More than fifty countries, including the UK, Australia, Japan, and India, still drive on the left today. CD two. Track sixteen. Sophie, can you do me a big favour? I really need your help. Why? What's the problem? You know I'm going to France to do a French course and stay with the family. Well, I don't know what to pack. Can you give me some advice? All right. Don't worry. 
I had the same problem last year when I went to Paris. How long will you be there? I'm going for a month. OK. The first thing you should do is check the weather forecast. I know it's summer, but it can get cold in the evenings. If I were you, I'd pack lots of t-shirts and a couple of pullovers. How big is your suitcase? It's not very big. I don't want to check it in. Mm, I think you should check it in. If you don't, you can't take shampoo and shower gel. Oh, I didn't think of that. Right, I'll take my mum and dad's suitcase. How many pairs of jeans do I need? You probably don't need to take more than two pairs of jeans, but you really ought to take some smart trousers for going out. Now, what about a present for the family? You mustn't forget to take them something. Oh yeah, of course. What do you think I should take? The best thing would be to get something at the airport, like a box of chocolates. Good thinking. Oh, just one more thing. It's a good idea to write a list of things you might forget, like your phone, tickets, money, etc. Thanks, Sophie. That's really helpful. <laughs> You're welcome. And don't forget your phone charger. I want to see lots of photos of France. CD2 Track 17 1 May I help you, madam? Yes. I waited for ages at the baggage reclaim area to collect my luggage, but it never arrived. I'm afraid it might be lost. Don't worry. Most luggage is usually found within an hour. Could I have your name and flight details, please? Yes. My name is Lucinda Heelan. That's H-E-A-L-A-N. I was on Alpha Airlines flight from Manchester. OK, let's see now. Oh, I'm afraid a mistake was made when you checked in. Your luggage is in Edinburgh. Oh, dear. Two. I've just come back from the Greek islands. Best holiday ever. First, I flew to Mykonos. That was a non-stop party and I met loads of great people there. Then I took a ferry to Santorini. Wow! There are traditional white houses, stunning views over the Aegean, and the famous blood-red sunset. After that, I sailed to Crete, where I visited an incredible ancient palace and swam at amazing beaches. Crete is a big place, and I needed my own transport so I rented a scooter and explored. I couldn't have had a better holiday. 3. Hello, Terence Jones speaking. Oh, Terry, I'm so glad I caught you before you left the office. Gina, hello. What's up? Aren't you on your way to New York? I was, but traffic has stopped on the motorway. Nothing's moving. There could have been an accident. Maybe. But right now, I need you to check what other flights there are for New York tonight. Just in case I miss mine, you know. No problem. I'll find out and call you back. Four. On today's segment of Where Have You Been? I'm asking the question, which is the most visited city in the world? It must be Paris, right? Wrong. Is it London? Wrong again. The most popular destination is Bangkok, the capital of Thailand. It's the first time that an Asian city has been the most popular. This year, it had nearly 16 million international visitors, only slightly more than London, which was the previous number one city destination. Will it still be so popular next year? 5. 
Oh, do hurry up. The woman on the ferry said we can get the best seats if we're there first. I'm walking as fast as I can and I'm carrying a heavy backpack. Well, you're the one who wanted to bring a big fancy camera as well as a video camera. Yes, because we'll have a great view from the top and I can take shots of all the important sites. Anyway, we haven't even got tickets. We can get them from the driver. Six. It's so easy to plan a trip these days, isn't it? That's because of the internet, of course. When I used to travel as a young man, I would find a travel agent to book a hotel room abroad. I would ask the agent a lot of questions, and he would give me some ideas for the trip. He had brochures and things like that. But the photos in them were always glossy and professional, taken from the best angles. I had no real idea what the hotel would be like. There was nowhere to read comments by other tourists. Now I know exactly where I'm going and what to expect. CD2 Track 18 Fish and Seafood 1. Tuna 2. Prawns 3. Sardines 4. Shellfish 5. Salmon Vegetables 6. Cabbage 7. Beetroot 8. Green beans 9. Brussels sprouts 10. Red peppers. CD2. Track 19. 1. Bitter. Sweet. 2. Cooked. Raw. 3. Fresh. Stale. 4. Hot or spicy. Mild. 5. Unripe. Ripe. CD2. Track 20. 1. Crisp. Crispy. 2. Grease. Greasy. 3. Juice. Juicy. 4. Salt. Salty. 5. Smell. Smelly. 6. Taste. Tasty. CD2. Track 21. Good morning and welcome to the food programme. Today our guest is nutritionist Sandra Duffy. Hello and welcome to the programme, Sandra. Hello, thanks for inviting me. Sandra, how do I know if my diet is healthy or not? Well, that's a good question and the easy answer is, do you feel well? Do you have plenty of energy? And secondly, do you look well? Does your skin and your hair look healthy? If you don't feel or look well, your diet may not be healthy. I always say that a healthy diet is a balanced one. You need a bit of everything, but not too much of anything, especially salt or sugar. A little salt and sugar is OK, but you shouldn't eat too much. For instance, there is a lot of salt in crisps and fast food, and a huge amount of sugar in fizzy drinks. I don't think people realise this. If you have a balanced diet, you get enough protein and vitamins. One of the healthiest diets in the world is the Mediterranean diet, and that's because Mediterranean people eat a huge variety of fresh food. Their diet is rich in fruit, vegetables, cereals, pasta, olive oil and fish. Just think about all the different Mediterranean vegetables. Green peppers, red tomatoes, lettuce, purple aubergines, yellow corn, black olives, 
A healthy meal is a colourful one. Even if you can't find Mediterranean vegetables, try to make your meals as colourful and varied as you can. Finally, one of the most important things about a healthy diet is that it must not be an obsession. Thinking about food is good, but if you become a very fussy eater, then your diet is probably not healthy. CD2 Track 22 1. I'm interested in having a natural diet, and so for the last two years I've only eaten raw food. I believe that when you cook fresh food, you lose the goodness and vitamins in the food. I eat raw vegetables, but of course I need protein, so I eat raw eggs. For dessert, I eat fruit. I feel healthy and I have lots of energy, but it's difficult to eat with the rest of my family, and that's a problem. 2. I love desserts. Cakes, puddings, chocolate, anything sweet. But one day I read an article about sugar and how bad it is for you. I thought about giving up desserts, but I couldn't do it. It's impossible. So I decided to divide the week into dessert days and non-dessert days. Now, there are five days in the week when I don't eat desserts, but at the weekend I can eat as many desserts as I like. On non-dessert days, I eat more fresh fruit, which is much healthier. 3. I only eat food that is grown or produced near my home. That means there's less choice because I don't live in a Mediterranean country. But the fruit and vegetables I eat are really fresh, and they taste so good. I do eat a lot of vegetables, but I'm not vegetarian. I tried once when I was about 14, but I missed meat, especially roast chicken. Now my parents have hens in the garden, and so we have fresh eggs every day. The best thing about eating locally produced food is that it's good for the environment. No planes or lorries are involved in transporting food for long distances. I think that's a good thing. 4. I am a vegan. That means I don't eat or use any animal products for any purpose. I don't eat meat, fish, dairy or anything that comes from animals. I don't wear clothes made from animals either. When I was a child, I ate meat and drank milk like most people. But then, when I was 13, I started thinking about where my food came from. I learned about how animals suffer, and I was shocked. I decided to become a vegan, and I've become very good at cooking lovely vegan meals. I respect animals, and I don't want them to suffer. CD2 Track 23 1 Coffee Orange. Two. Beef. Beans. Three. Grapes. Cakes. Four. Banana. Avocado. Five. Cabbage. Spinach. <laughs>